Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. Today is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's kind of sort of a vlog, but not really. If you were here last month, you may know that I took part in the amazing readathon put together by Brianna at Four Pauls in a Book. And one of the things I wanted to do during the month was to read um, a host favorite from each of the purple hosts. So I was on the purple team. Uh, I was a purple host. So a favorite of myself, a favorite from Zoe at Zoe's All Booked, and a favorite of Margaret at The Word Nerd. And they'll both be linked down below as well. And so there were like five from each person to choose from. And I was like, I want to vlog it. I want to do like a 24 to 36 hour vlog and vlog myself reading those three books. Well, first off, we all know that I'm not good at vlogs in the first place, but also in the process of doing the vlog for this video, I lost a lot of clips. I lost some stuff from the beginning. I lost some stuff from the end. I lost some stuff in the middle a little bit. Um, so today's video is really just going to be because two of the three books made me weep and and I didn't want you guys to miss out on that. Um, today's video is really just going to be what the clips that we do have. There's some of me gardening, there's some of me at work talking about um, one of the books and a lot of it is just here in this chair talking about the books that I read. Um, I ended up reading from my own favorites Every Gift a Curse by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is the third and final book in the All Our Hidden Gifts trilogy. From Zoe, I read the first book in the Parasol Protectorate series, which was Soulless by Gail Carriger. And from Margaret, I read Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga, um, which was a mid-grade. So I read a YA, an adult, and a mid-grade. And I read one of each of our favorites, and I ended up rating them all fairly highly. I or I lost the clips of like me starting out telling you what I was reading. I lost my intro. I lost um, some of like me doing sprints one night and like talking about other things that I was going to be doing while I was listening to it. Um, I also filmed a bookshelf reorganization in the middle of this. <laughs> I have clips of the bookshelf reorganization. Um, so it's it's a little bit all over the place. This is really going to be one for people who genuinely like my content because if you don't like me there's probably nothing here for you um, because it's literally just going to be me trying to put these things in sequential order. Probably hopping in with some text on the screen to be like I don't know how we're starting here or how we got here but here we are. And I do talk about the books but I didn't have any of them rated when I got to um, the end. So we'll tell you those when we get to the end. So let's just roll into um, the first clip which was me at work having read some of, I believe I was reading Every Gift a Curse first. So we'll just hop into that and go from there. So this is the first update for the vlog. I am currently at work, hence the lack of a good angle plus shaky, you know, and loud semi noises. Um, I'm currently on page 61 of Was that necessary? <laughs> I'm currently on page 61 of Every Gift a Curse, which is my favorite. Um, it's the longest of the three, so I decided to read it first so that I could get my bonus point. I am going to try to read all three of these in like 36 hours, maybe 48, um, but I started at about 7 o'clock this morning. Um, so that was Corey. Say hi, Corey. Say hi, Corey. So yeah, that's where we're at. Page 61 with a Corey. Meow, meow. And at work. Here's some vlog footage you never thought you were going to get from me. Uh, this here be my uh, green stock. And I'm home from work, obviously. So it's time to go through and water it, which you can tell I did because sprinkle, sprinkle, I dropped some water. Um, but time to go through and pick out, pick out any good veg. We definitely have some tomatoes that are ready, or as I like to call them, ready enough. Because if you don't pull them while they're still 
a little yellow and they sit here forever. And then they're not any good anymore. So you just kind of gotta go for what feels right. Are there lots of dead ones in here? Yes. Is it because my goat decided to try to eat part of the tree and then now they're dying like this? Also, yes. Mostly what we have ready is tomatoes. There's a nice one up here. These are my heirloom ones. And lots of cherries are almost always ready. also have these gorgeous Marconi peppers that I'm going to go ahead and pull because, hello bug, um, they're supposed to turn red before you pull them, but he's a little squishy, so we're just going to go ahead and pull these guys. Should have brought a cutting device with me, but uh, I did not, so you'll just have to watch me. Struggle. Come on, Mr. Marconi Pepper, you got this. Um, this one can stay for another day. This one can go. This guy, he's not quite ready yet. But these two, these two can go. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what I see? You see that? I think it's another tomato. You're wrong. It's an orange snack box pepper. It's ready. My snack box peppers are blooming like crazy in here. This guy's supposed to be a green pepper, but obviously is yellow. So that's a good sign, right? This is a green pepper. There she is. She's not ready yet, though. And these are my two green pepper plants. They are indeed. I pulled some off of them the other night when we were making dinner, so I think they are all done for now. And I think that's going to be it for us tonight for Pepper Land and Tomato Land. And God, this plant looks sad. I also have some cucumbers in here, but my cucumbers are not doing well. Let's just put it that way. They apparently didn't pollinate properly. Also, they're dying, clearly. Um, I, I don't know. This is my first year gardening, so it's, uh, it's a crapshoot. Also, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I'm going to show you the office because it's a mess. I mean, she's getting... Girl, you need to film. Girl, you need to clean your shit up. Girl, you need to eat your dinner. Girl, you need to throw out your trash. Girl, what the fuck? Like, you know, it's just, it's, she'd be a mess. Also, I want to do a bookshop reorganization, and I'll probably do that in this video, too, um, while I listen to audiobooks this weekend. You know, living a dream. Living the dream. I don't know. Uh, anywho, I think Rye is streaming right now. Let's find out look at me go. I was correct. Rye is currently streaming. Uh, so the plan is eat some dinner. She'd be right there. It's just leftovers from last night. Do some sprints. I have about an hour left of, uh, what's the book I'm reading? You tell me. We'll both know. Uh, Every Gift a Curse. It's right there. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. We'll see how I feel about it when I'm done. Don't mind me. I'm just over here crying. <laughs> Why is it every time I vlog um, reading a book, I end up in tears? What is it about that that happens? <laughs> oh, I finished Every Gift a Curse. And <laughs> it's not a sad cry, it's a happy cry, but you know, it's like, I read the first book last year in November or December, I think in December, because I bought it in October when I was on um, my writing retreat with my girlies, and I loved that book. It was my favorite book of last year, and then I read the second book, and it was really good, 
Um, I read that earlier this year and then I pre-ordered the audiobook for book three and I think it came through uh, a couple weeks ago. The audiobook, the book actually came out last fall but the audiobook didn't come out until within the past couple weeks. It may have been June. I don't know. Anyway, anywho. <laughs> I never really expected it to end the way that it did and I'm really happy that it ended that way, you know? Um, it still has an open ending. It still has like the, you know, they didn't resolve all of society. They didn't solve all of the world's problems. But our friend group really, they did the thing, you know? It's another one of those things where I just, I love a found family. I love when people are able to come together and really be there for each other and be that support and be the kind of people that you need and that they're able to essentially save the world together. And I mean, that's always an important part of any kind of uh, story like this for me is the family aspect of it and being able to come together and solve all of the problems or some of the problems as it were. And just reading the the final chapter, which is titled The End, um, which is a fantastic way to end a final chapter or to title a final chapter. And seeing what they did together, what they were able to accomplish together and, and how everything ended up considering how nervous I was earlier on in the book with where things were going. I, I definitely appreciate where things went. It was, it was a choice. It was, it was a time, as I say. I really liked the end of it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to rate it yet. I will uh, rate everything, write my reviews at the end of the video, but Right now it is about 9 p.m., which means I've taken a full 14 hours to read the first book, which actually isn't that bad, but I still have two more books to go. I have Soulless and I have Other Words for Home, that's it, which I think is probably also going to make me cry, so <laughs> yay for me. Uh, you may get to watch me cry twice in speed. I'm not crying that much right now, which is great, but I was, I was definitely, um, definitely had the tears going earlier so um I need to do some video editing so I'm gonna work on that for the rest of the sprint there should be about 20 minutes or so left let me look yeah so I'm going to do some sprints and nope I'm going to finish out these sprints with some video editing because I need to get a video up uh, I think I'm like one or two behind for the week and then I will start reading either Solus or other words for home. They both say they're about the same amount of pages, but other words for home only has like a three hour audiobook. Three and a half hours. It's less than four hours, so it feels like a high page count for such a short book, uh, audiobook lengthwise. And I don't know if I have solo on audio or if I have digital. I don't know. But I will figure that out and then I'll let you know what I pick up next. Hello, friends. It is now. Saturday and much later in the day than I had originally planned to uh, be back to reading and vlogging but here we be. I did some filming this morning. I did my TBR takedown video. I did get my desk mostly cleaned off though it's full again from books from the video so I don't know how productive that actually was but I did get a lot of stuff cleaned up. Currently watching Margaret do sprints on her channel. And sprints on my channel are going to start probably in the next hour, so I need to get ready for that. But I need to first tell you what I'm going to be reading because I hadn't decided last night. And this morning I got up and I got ready for the day. I made my hair pretty. Uh, and I took care of the dogs and cleaned the kitchen some and uh, filmed videos, did things. So I am going to pick up other words for home next. Um, as I said, it's a fairly short audiobook, so I'm gonna pick that up first during sprints. I don't know who's joining me during sprints. Um, I think Neva said that she was for sure gonna hop in, but other than Neva, I'm not really sure. So it doesn't really matter. You know me, I'll do sprints for six hours by myself. It's not the first Saturday I've done it. Um, that's pretty much been most of my Saturdays lately, so 
I am going to be doing that and I will probably be able to get through um, other words for home in the first couple of sprints depending on how long they are um, and then after that I will start soulless I'm hoping to finish both by the end of tonight but we'll see how it ends up I do also still need to film my wrap-up um, and I would like to get that done today too so that tomorrow I don't have any filming to do and I can just edit but I'll just do that during one of the sprints okay so I've started other words for home I cried during the introduction and now we're going to do some book reorganizing so I'm gonna put you on the big camera and we'll just do some shuffling I guess I don't know what you'll see and what you won't see but I'm just gonna put it over there in the corner and we'll go from there You know, yesterday when I finished, <laughs> when I finished Every Gift a Curse, I was like, yeah, I cried. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not fine today. Um, other words for home. Mm. I'm not okay. I'm really not okay. I think I just threw my last tissue. No, I didn't. It's over here. <laughs> the thing is, like, it's not sad, question marks. Like, it's not nothing 
I don't like it. <laughs> it's not sad. It's not. It's not sad in the sense that like you know you don't like half the characters don't die and you know what I mean like it's not sad in that way it's 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 sad in the way that you have to look at the world in a different way and you have to remember that even though things are not great for women in the United States right now that it's a lot worse a lot of other places for a lot of other people and it's the thing where it, like it takes you out of thinking about how things might be for you to stop being so selfish think about other people for a minute and it's it's not fun it's not a fun time to to be in a world where People treat children the way that Judah is treated in this book, and that she comes from a world where, a world, a, a country, where people are not safe in a sense that they are leaving in mass and taking even, <laughs> you know, even less safe. Uh, roots to get away from the war and to try to keep themselves and their children safe and then people like Judah's brother Issa who decides that you know he's a young man and he wants to fight for you know the freedom of the people and for doing what's right and to help out the people who are in these war-torn countries and on one hand you're like you know I wish he would just see with his family and be safe but on the other hand you're like but if he doesn't fight if no one fights then no one's safe <laughs> because you know as they say if you stand by why they while they come for your neighbors eventually they'll come for you too and it's just it's a really beautiful book um, it has a lot of good sentiments. It has a lot of Assyrian culture, especially from Judah's, because it's from Judah's point of view, and you get to see her experience in America for the first time. And it's Cincinnati, which is Ohio, which is where I'm from. Um, I'm about two-ish hours north of there. Yes, in Ohio, we measure distance by time, not by miles. I don't know why we do that. We just do. Seeing how Judah, who is twelve-ish. I know she said how old she was, but I've read so much mid-grade lately, it's just kind of garbled in there at this point. Um, but for her to, the way she experiences the world and the way that she has to deal with her, her mom's brother, who is um, from Syria, but is an American, and his wife, who was born in America, and his daughter, who is her cousin, who was born in America, and how different they all are, and... Um, I actually did write down something while I was reading. When Judah leaves to go to America, her brother Issa says, tells her to be brave, which is something that she doesn't think she can do. Later on in the book, they're talking about hope. And Judah says, hoping is the bravest thing a person can do. And... That one really hit me, obviously, because I took the time to write it down and post it note it to the bookshelf. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I knew that book was going to hurt, but I didn't expect to enjoy it so much from both a good and bad perspective. You know, good because... I like learning about other cultures and other people, but bad in the sense that it just reminds you of how fucked up the world is that we live in. I have like 15 seconds left of this spurt, so I'm gonna go back to that, but uh, best of luck to me. <laughs> Do you remember like, I don't know, the other day when I was like, I'm gonna read all three of these in 36 to 48 hours or 24 to 30, it's Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday.
it's a Tuesday. Um, I, I took yesterday off. I read some on Sunday. Yesterday I didn't read anything. I had planned to do more reading Sunday than I did and I had planned to do some reading yesterday uh, at work and ended up just being so busy that like, I mean I didn't even eat lunch until two o'clock because I looked up at the clock and was like shit I didn't even realize it was lunchtime yet. Um, it was two hours past lunchtime. I hadn't even realized lunchtime had occurred. So um, yeah, yesterday was busy. So today I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to read Solace while at work. And I did. I don't know what I thought this book was going to be about. Not this. <laughs> First off, I have always thought that this book was a YA. Definitely not. Mm -mm. Girl, no. She's spicy. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's just like the way the not the way the covers are made, or I don't, I don't know. Like I've never really heard anybody talk about it other than Zoe before, um, and I apparently wasn't paying attention when Zoe was talking about it because I just assumed it was YA. It's not, and I, I don't know what I thought I was getting. Okay, so for those of you who have been around um, lately while I've been doing writing things, um, I've been recently I. Earlier this month I outlined, well I guess it was July, not August, but in July I outlined um, like 10,000 words of a werewolf romance story. How did I not know this book existed? I still don't know what I'm going to rate it. I still need to do that. I haven't even written my reviews for anything. Like I'm like 16 reviews behind. It's really only six because I think I've only read six books this month. Seven? Six. Seven. I don't know. However many books I've read this month, I haven't written any reviews, so I need to do that. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I think I'm at six. I think I'm at six. Um, but yeah, I need to. I need to write some reviews. <sighs> and uh, get everything put everywhere. You know, all the. I need to do all the things. So that's what I'm gonna do. Once I have my rating, I'll be able to come out, hop in, and tell you those. But I really enjoyed this book. I really liked it. I liked our main character, Alexia. She was, you know brash, cynical, sarcastic, all of the things I love, especially in like a period drama. I loved our werewolves and our vampires and like all of the, you know, society people that we got to see. I enjoyed them. I like the way the characters were done. I would like to see more world building in the next couple of books, but I guess from the way that the first book ended that there will be more um, society things, more um, world building in the second book. Love the love interest. Love the romance. Here for it. Plot was good. Had a fantastic time. <laughs> it didn't make me cry. That's a bonus. But uh, she was a fun spicy time. So as I said, you've seen the clips now. You see, you see what mess we have to work with here. I hadn't rated anything at the time, so we'll go over what I ended up rating everything. Ever Gift A Curse ended up with a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Other Words For Home ended up at a 4.5 out of 5 and Soulless ended up at a 4.25 out of 5 and I have since continued reading um, the Parasol Protectorate series. I've read book two and I've read the Meet Cute novella. So and I do plan to continue reading on with those and I have been buying them. I've ordered them but they're not all here yet. I got a couple of them um, from the discount bookstore but then uh, realized that they were the UK paperback versions and I wanted them all to be the same height so I had to order the other three versions from the UK so I ordered those from Blackwell's. Um, if you used to order books from Book Depository which does not exist anymore because Amazon bought them and then closed them, um, Blackwell's which I'll link down below is a UK bookstore that you can purchase from that ships to the US and a bunch of other places as well. They're kind of picking up the slack from Book Depository so if you're looking for a place to get the books you used to get from Book Depository like your Pretty White Brandon Sanderson covers or your Pretty White Throne of Glass covers um, that is a good place that you can get those. I did talk about all three of these books when I filmed my wrap up for the month as well. So if you're in for that full length feature film, it's actually probably only an hour special. <laughs> I think I ended up filming for like an hour and a half. So it'll probably end up being about a 45 minute video. Um, but that should be up later this week as well. I'm gonna do this one first and then my wrap up and then my haul and then TBR takedown, I think is the order that I'm gonna do them in. I have a lot of videos to edit and I have a lot to figure out. Uh, but Hopefully there's some content this month that you guys will enjoy. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a tornado emoji. Is there a tornado emoji? 
If not, leave me something weather related uh, because this, <laughs> this vlog was chaos. That is all I have for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.